30th lecture and we are going to discuss advantages of negative feedback negative feedback amplifiers advantages of negative feedback amplifiers now as far as feedback is concerned whether it is positive or negative shall be determined by the sign of a beta and you recall that our general block diagram was that we have an x s and an x f both are taken with a positive sign this is x i and then you have the basic amplifier a the output is x 0 through a what do you call this network sampling network which we show simply as a line we take a beta network through which is transmitted the signal x f and the basic assumptions were that A was a forward looking device, it transmits in the forward direction and beta transmits in the reverse direction only. This, under these assumptions we derived the relationship that A f the feedback gain which is x 0 by x of s is given by the gain without feedback A divided by 1 minus A beta and this and the <coughs> the nature of feedback whether it is positive or negative is determined by the sign of a beta. Now a beta can be complex a beta can also be complex okay and that is when complications arise if a beta is complex it is frequency dependent complications arise that at some frequency at some frequency the feedback may be negative at other frequencies feedback may be positive okay so if the feedback is to be negative then we can do one of the two things we can say a beta is equal to minus uh, a1 beta1 one, or we can we can simply change the sign here instead of positive we can make it negative and say the gain would be a divided by 1 plus a beta in the context of our discussions it should be clear as to what we have done but we are basically discussing negative feedback because that is what is used in amplifiers positive feedback is hardly ever used except in the case of oscillators okay so <coughs> one of the uh, one of the good effects of negative feedback is desensitization yeah what was the Barkhausen? Oh, Barkhausen criterion was that if A beta is equal to 1 0 degree at some frequency at omega equal to omega 0, then A f tends to infinity and the circuit oscillates at the frequency omega 0. This is the Barkhausen criterion. The criterion is simply a beta equal to 1 0 degree. This is the condition, this is the criterion for oscillations at the frequency at which this occurs. Barkhausen, yes. Sir, even if this is real, a beta. Even if a beta is real, yes. Then it can be 1. What happens in situation? What happens then? Nuisance. Since it is satisfied at all frequencies, if it is real, you get noise at the output, that is all nothing else all frequencies are present which means all frequencies mixed together will be simply noise if you if you accommodate the whole of iit in this room whole of iit obviously it would not make sense but if you accumulate only second year electrical engineering students here and scdr here it is a w204 class it is meaningful is that clear okay if a beta is real then all you get at the output is noise and if it is an audio amplifier for example, if it is an audio amplifier you can speak as loud as possible on the microphone nothing will be heard all that will be heard is noise okay. So one of the advantages of negative feedback as I had said is desensitization, desensitization of the gain, desensitization of gain with respect to device parameters and environment
we have already seen environmental changes. We have already seen manifestations of this in the case of the common emitter amplifier with an unbypassed resistor, but formally, <coughs> formally the sensitivity of any quantity, sensitivity of any quantity G with respect to any of its parameters X, G is a function of X, is defined as, this is the symbol that is used, capital S for G is the gain, G is the gain, sensitivity of gain, I am using a general symbol, I do not want to use A or AF because I am going to use them later. <clears throat> the general definition is G can be any function, any performance parameter, it could be impedance, it could be admittance, it could be a gain, voltage gain, current gain, whatever it is. A performance parameter capital G is a function of the parameter X in the circuit, then the sensitivity of G with respect to X is defined as X, well let me give the definition first, delta G by G divided by delta X by X. In other words, <coughs> if the parameter changes by a certain fraction, how much change does it affect on the performance? That is the definition, that is the qualitative definition. If delta X by X changes by 1 percent and delta G by G changes by half percent, then half is the sensitivity. Okay? So, it is a <coughs> an indication of how much X has an effect on the performance. Now, as you can see, this can be written as X by G, delta G by delta X and this delta G is a finite change, delta X is a finite change. Usually, we find it convenient to make delta X to be infinitesimally small, delta X tends to 0, then obviously S G X would be X by G, differential coefficient of G with respect to X and this is the measure that is very widely used. In practice, we should use, for example, <clears throat> if you want to find the change of gain with respect to beta by device replacement, you know beta with from one device to another can change by as much as 100 percent. So, if you take two transistors, in one of them beta is 100 and in the other it is 200, obviously delta beta cannot be considered infinitesimal. Okay? So, this definition will fail when delta, when delta x is not infinitesimal, but nevertheless we use this as a measure, as a convenient measure. Can just be a partial derivative? Okay. Capital G is usually a function of not just one parameter, but many parameters. So, if, if I say capital G is a function of x1, x2 and so on, then the modification that you have to do is, if this is xi, then you have to put xi over g and instead of small d, you have to replace it by the curly d or delta, the partial derivative. This is very uh, simple to follow, that if capital G is a multivariable function, it is a function of many variables, then obviously total differentiation with respect to a parameter does not make sense, it has to be partial differentiation. Okay? And then the total change in G, delta G, has to be computed well, you cannot compute delta G, you can compute DG, total differential, that would be S G X I multiplied by DX summation of this. Into G by X? That is right. You have to multiply by delta x i, d x i. Agreed? Okay. So, <coughs> this is how it is done. Now, in the context of our discussion of negative feedback amplifiers, we are going to consider one parameter at a time and we, are no, we shall not be concerned with the total change. This, of course, we have done when we are doing the uh, 
bias calculations, bias stability, isn't it? We consider three parameters VBI, ICBO, and beta, and we found out the total change. Okay. Now, in the, in our case, AF is equal to A by one minus A beta. All right, and we want to find out the sensitivity of AF. The feedback gain with respect to A. It is A which changes due to device change, device parameter change, or environmental change. And you can easily show by differentiation and by applying the definition that this quantity is 1 by 1 minus A beta. And obviously, this will go to 0 if A beta <coughs> is very large compared to unity. Okay, this will go to 0 and uh, <coughs> under this condition obviously AF if A beta is very large compared to unity obviously AF tends to minus 1 over beta that is the feedback gain is controlled by the beta network only it is not affected by the gain of the internal or the basic amplifier and one manifestation of this many manifestations of this you have already seen one of them for example is in this operational amplifier if you have two resistances rf and ri and your input is here the output is here this is grounded the gain is a and you know if a is large there is a negative feedback through here negative feedback through RF and if A, A is large you know that V0 by VI is approximately equal to minus RF by RI. That is the gain is controlled only by the external resistors and by the feedback network RF and RI is the feedback network. Okay? This is one of the manifestations. The other was when you had the common emitter amplifier with an unbypassed resistor. Re, then you had the gain was approximately equal to minus Rc by Re. This is also a manifestation of negative feedback. Desensitization of the gain of the feedback amplifier due to negative feedback. So, this is one of the major advantages. <coughs> the second advantage that we are going to consider is about reducing non-linear distortion NLD. <coughs> this you must follow very carefully because there are tricky points where one gets deceived. For simplicity we consider an ideal yes. Sir, uh, how can we specifically say that only the negative uh, reduces the sensitivity? Yeah, but before that happens, if A beta is very large in positive feedback, the gain will take over. Okay, that's a good point. I was, I was expecting this. <coughs> in fact, when I was writing this, you you must have noticed that I was slow in writing this because I was expecting a question. Nevertheless, better late than never. What he is saying is this is not true only about positive feedback, only about negative feedback. It can also happen in negative feedback. I am sorry. It can also happen in positive feedback because what I have assumed here is magnitude A beta much greater than 1. Okay? Now, if A beta is positive, if A beta is positive, it cannot exceed 1. Isn't that right? If there is positive feedback, it cannot exceed 1 because as soon as A beta becomes 1, the circuit goes into oscillation or nuisance as the case may be, okay? nonsense as the case may be and therefore, it is not relevant to positive feedback. All right? This desensitization is not relevant to positive feedback because the circuit no longer performs as an amplifier, it becomes an oscillator. Okay. <coughs> Now, to be, to be specific, we consider the basic amplifier as a voltage amplifier. That is, we consider <coughs> Vs 
R s an ideal voltage amplifier that is R i is infinity. So, we have V i which is equal to V s <coughs> and then we have A v V i plus minus that is it. This is V 0 and the load is here R l this is V 0. We consider the basic amplifier as a voltage amplifier. Now, you know <coughs> from your experience with voltage amplifiers that we have discussed so far that this relationship this ideal relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage that they uh, differ only by a constant that the ratio is a constant this can be valid only over a certain range of input voltages agreed. As soon as you go into the saturation region or in the cutoff region non-linear distortion starts and therefore if I plot the curve of V0 <coughs> versus V i. Now, V i can go positive as well as negative. The curve would be a straight line passing through the origin. What is this origin? What does this origin correspond to? Zero input zero, that means the Q point. Okay. So, this origin actually corresponds to the Q point and the curve would be a straight line like this only for a certain range of V i let us say <coughs> for this range typically it could be 40 millivolts typically let us assume a figure of 40 plus minus 40 millivolt. Okay. What will happen afterwards as soon as we cross 40 millivolt limit well saturation or cutoff will set in depending on the polarity and the curve will try to flatten off like this. Similarly, here also agreed. Now, if I apply negative feedback <coughs> suppose the gain is 100 let us take a specific case suppose the gain is 100 then the slope of this curve shall be 100. Okay dv0 dvi shall be 100 over the red region as soon as it goes into black the gain effectively decreases drops down. Okay. Suppose the gain is 100 in this region and suppose the input vi is equal to let us say 10 millivolt what would be v0 then 1000 millivolt which is 1 volt. Okay. Now, suppose we subject this amplifier this basic amplifier to negative feedback all right and let us say our beta is equal to 0 0.09 let us say take some figure 0 0.09 typically this is the figure I mean it is very small fraction of the output is fed back to the input. Then with negative feedback what is V s corresponding to V i equal to 10 millivolt it would be V i plus 0 0.09 volt which is 90 millivolt. So, V s required would be 100 millivolt for V i equal to 10 millivolt is this point clear with negative feedback V i is equal to V s minus beta V 0 with negative feedback that is what I have done to make a V i of 10 millivolt we have to apply a V s equal to 100 millivolt agreed. <coughs> if I want to make a V i if I want to go to V i limit that is 40 millivolt then how much V s do I need. Okay. V s would be 40 millivolt 400 millivolt obviously did you have to make this calculation no you could have said this just by looking at the figure. So, <coughs> now notice what I am saying. So, instead of plus minus 40 millivolt instead of limiting the input voltage to 40 millivolt we have to limit now V s to 400 millivolt 
okay does this reduce distortion is it a reflection of distortion reduction no it is not it is only a reflection of the property that the dynamic range of the amplifier is increased is not that right instead of limiting your input voltage to plus minus 40 millivolt you are now able to increase it to 400 millivolt at what cost the gain, is reduced. the gain is reduced to how much 10 times the gain is reduced by a factor of 10 agreed so there is no reduction of nonlinear distortion it is only that the dynamic range is increased all right Oh, instead of limiting our input voltage to 40 millivolt, we are because of negative feedback, we are able to increase the input voltage to 400 millivolt without nonlinear distortion setting in. Okay, so what we have done is yes. So you could have as well done this by a potential divider taking. Of course, of course, we could have done that. Yes. So virtually, we have gained nothing. Source voltage, source voltage, yes, okay. So the curve is in uh, VI and V0. Curve is in VI and V0. We can plot a curve VI, V0 versus VS also. We can plot a curve and that curve would be, what would be the nature of that curve? It would be linear with a less slope and it would go right up to 400 millivolt on this side and 400 millivolt on the other side, okay. The slope of this curve would be simply 10 because the gain was 100 and 1 plus a beta is equal to 10. Okay, It would be 1 plus a beta now because negative feedback. All right, So we have gained nothing by this negative feedback. We have only reduced the gain and we have been able to increase the source voltage, the dynamic range of the amplifier. However, make an approximation to this characteristic through piecewise linear curves. That is, let us say you have you have this, this as the linear region and suppose the gain here is 1000. As soon as you exceed the dynamic range, as soon as you exceed the dynamic range, the curve tends to saturate if you approximate that by a piecewise linear curve, let us say the curve goes like this. Okay. Obviously, if the dynamic range, if the input range is goes right up to here and here, there will be a lot of nonlinear distortion because of this kink in the gain curve. Let us say the gain here is 100. Okay. Now, let us see what happens with negative feedback. Suppose the beta factor is, let us reduce it further. Suppose beta is 0 0.01. Then when the gain is 1000, when the gain is 1000, what is the gain of the, what is the feedback gain? It is 1000 divided by 1 plus 1000 multiplied by 0 0.01. So, it is 10. That is 90.9, 90.9 approximately. Okay. So, the, in this range, the curve gets reduced, the curve gets flatter, the slope decreases to 90.9. Okay. So, it maybe it becomes something like this. Fine. What happens to the gain in this region? It becomes 100 divided by 11, which is 100 divided by 2. I beg your pardon. 100 divided by 2, because 1 plus 100 multiplied by 1, which is 50. And therefore, the gain flattens off like this, maybe like this. Now, a change of slope from 1000 to 100 and a change of slope from 90 to 50 by a factor of 2, previously it was a factor of 10. Therefore, the nonlinear distortion in the feedback amplifier would be much less 
as compared to nonlinear distortion in the non feedback amplifier. Is the point clear? This picture is worth a million words. It explains how nonlinear distortion is reduced. In other words, the transitions or the discontinuities are smoothed out by nonlinear distortion. And if you apply sufficient feedback and the gain was sufficiently large, you can make this curve almost a straight line. Okay, these kinks are reduced and therefore there is a reduction in nonlinear distortion. This is a qualitative picture. Now let us look at it quantitatively. What is the what is the uh, what is the price that you pay? The gain. Gain is reduced by a factor of in this range. 10 or 11? 11. The gain is reduced by a factor of 11. Now, one can argue that this feedback amplifier that you have, AF, you have reduced nonlinear distortion by reducing the, by introducing negative feedback. And the factor is 11. So, why do not you add an amplifier, a pre amplifier of gain 11? such that this gain reduction is compensated for. Now, this is a very tricky suggestion. You must make sure that this pre-amplifier does not introduce nonlinear distortion. Now, would it or would it not? That is the question. Since the gain is small, since the gain is small, the nonlinear distortion introduced by this pre-amplifier will be much less as compared to the feedback amplifier. Small gain and therefore, the excursion of voltage at the output may not go, will not go to cutoff or saturation. And therefore, it is easy to design a small, a low, amp, low gain amplifier, low gain pre amplifier to compensate for the reduction of gain in the feedback amplifier qualitatively. Now, let us look at it quantitatively. It is very important to establish this and be convinced that nonlinear distortion can indeed be reduced by <coughs> feedback. Let us consider the usual <coughs> feedback block diagram, the basic amplifier A, and now because of negative feedback, we use a negative sign here. All right, we use a negative sign here. This comes from the beta network. This is V0, this is Vf, we are now considering voltages, this is Vi and this is the beta network. Now, the occurrence of nonlinear distortion obviously, this block diagram is valid when everything is linear and we can derive that uh, V0 by Vs is equal to a divided by 1 plus a beta because negative feedback has been assumed here. Okay. Now, the nonlinear distortion obviously occurs in the amplifier and can be taken care of by introducing the distortion term as a summation term here. Let us say that the distortion voltage or distortion component of the output is Vd then obviously distortion can be shown in this diagram by means of an additional voltage vd and if you now analyze if you now analyze including vd then obviously v0 would be equal to avi plus vd is the point clear avi is the undistorted output add to it the distortion okay so the output becomes distorted if you now analyze this circuit, you can show very simple algebra that V0 is equal to A V s divided by 1 plus A beta that is the undistorted output plus V d divided by 1 plus A beta. Now, have we been able to reduce nonlinear distortion? Obviously not because we still have A V s plus V d divided by 1 plus A beta. 
both the signal and the nonlinear distortion have been reduced by the factor of 1 plus a beta. So, the relative values have not changed, right? The nonlinear distortion in the output has been reduced by the same factor as the signal. So, the <coughs> relative values have not changed. But suppose now we add another amplifier here, a preamplifier whose value is 1 plus a beta. And let us say the actual input source voltage is V s prime. Then obviously, V 0 would be equal to A V s prime okay, plus V d divided by 1 plus A beta. I beg your pardon, this should be Okay, no, this is okay. <coughs> is it ABS? It is ABS. That's right. If I multiply this, I can put it here or I can put it at the other end. Shall I put it at the other end? Post amplifier? Yes or no? No, because then the distortion will also be. So I have to use a pre amplifier with a gain of 1 plus A beta and 1 plus a beta at pre amplifier stage shall handle much less excursion of voltage than the basic amplifier and therefore the nonlinear distortion in 1 plus a beta can be reduced and I can regain the original amplifier gain a with a distortion which is reduced by the factor of 1 by 1 plus a beta. Okay, no, there is no distortion here, and therefore this voltage Vs is equal to Vs prime multiplied by one plus a beta. All right, that's all the change. The output should be Vs prime. Output should be Vs prime. Okay, so what we do here is we consider this as Vs. Is it okay now? We have applied instead of Vs, we have applied one plus a beta times Vs. Okay, is the difficulty taken care of? All right. So we convince ourselves by qualitative analysis. In qualitative analysis, we look at the kink, and the kink is straightened out. Okay, so nonlinear distortion is reduced. Quantitatively, we see that the distortion can be reduced by the factor one plus a beta by negative feedback. Yes, it's important that you understand this. Yeah. It did not give us any knowledge about the relative uh, distortion in the signal. It was only after we quantitatively derived the formula. That's right. This is why I wanted you to understand qualitatively first. Qualitatively, what is happening is if the gain goes like this, then with negative feedback, these are straightened out. So it becomes more of a straight line than with a kink. And therefore, the nonlinear distortion is reduced. Now, is it not also obvious that if this amplifier generates some noise at the output, then this noise will also be reduced by the same factor? Is the point clear? If instead of nonlinear distortion, the distortion was due to noise, short noise, Johnson noise, whatever the source of noise is, noise at this point at the output of the amplifier, then obviously this noise will also be reduced by the same factor 1 plus a beta. But now, Uncle, this is for your attention. Now there is a problem. There is a problem. You cannot make up for the gain by a preamplifier. Why not? Because the preamplifier will have noise. Noise is omnipresent. It does not depend on the signal level. The noise generated by an amplifier, a device a resistance, a capacitance or whatever the device is, is independent of the signal and therefore there shall be the noise generated by the preamplifier shall also be amplified. Okay? And therefore, compared to nonlinear distortion, the noise reduction is to a much less extent. In other words, what you have to do is you have to design specially a preamplifier 
with a gain of 11 or whatever the gain is which is noiseless. You have to take special components which generate less noise or have a special architecture for this circuit which is a noiseless architecture. So, noise reduction is not is not as easy as nonlinear distortion reduction. Okay. I also said that negative feedback controls impedance levels. This we shall illustrate with the help of again a, a very ideal <coughs> ideal amplifier. Suppose you have a series connection at the input. Suppose you have a series connection at the input. You have a voltage source V s and then you have the feedback voltage V f. Okay. I am looking at the equivalent circuit of the input V f and you have an R i. Okay. The input resistance without feedback is R i. What I want to find out this is R i. Let us say this is V i and this is i sub i. <coughs> if it is negative feedback. Okay, let us do that. Good point. Let us make it negative feedback minus plus. Then what is the resistance input resistance that is seen by V s? Obviously, it is V s divided by I sub I and V s is V i what is the uh, K V L V s equal to V i plus V f divided by i sub i agreed this is negative feedback and this would be equal to V i plus beta a V i divided by i sub i agreed the feedback voltage is beta times A multiplied by V i. Beta times V 0, V 0 is A V i. Okay. So, this is equal to R i multiplied by 1 plus A beta. So, in series connection the input impedance increases by the factor 1 plus A beta and this is independent of what the output connection is. Whether the output connection is series or shunt it does not matter. Agree? The input impedance increases with negative feedback if the input connection is series. Can you see it qualitatively why it happens? Yes? So, the same V s we have less current. <laughs> For the same V s we have less current because there is an additional source here. Agree? Qualitatively, this is obvious, but this is the quantitative relationship that the input resistance R i f is equal to this. By the same token, can you now say that if the connection was shunt negative feedback with input shunt connection, then what will happen to R i f? Shunt at input. Shunt means current is being taken away or another additional impedance is coming in, in shunt in parallel. So, the input impedance should decrease and it is very easy to prove that if it is shunt at input then R i f is R i divided by 1 plus a beta. Once again it is negative feedback. It is very easy to prove. I will skip this proof if you do not mind. What can you say about the output resistance? Again you can do it quantitatively but qualitatively you see that if the output resistance R 0 if the connection is series then the output resistance would increase or decrease if it is series it increases. Why is it so? Because if it is if the connection is in series let me draw the amplifier you have the basic amplifier 
then you have the load and then you have a series connection. This goes to the feedback network. So the output impedance that is seen by the load is not only the output impedance of the basic amplifier but it is added to the impedance that it sees here and therefore the output resistance effectively increases and this increase is again by the same factor 1 plus A beta and this increase is independent of whether the input connection is shunt or series it does not matter. If the output connection sampling connection is a series connection then the output impedance increases in a similar manner if it is a shunt connection <coughs> R0 shunt at output then the output impedance ROF pardon me? decreases by the same factor 1 plus A beta. I leave these proofs to you. Please do uh, try to establish them. Okay? So all these results only hold for negative feedback? All these results hold for negative feedback, yes. So positive the That's right, in positive. But make sure that A beta is less than 1 that A beta is never allowed to exceed unity. If it is allowed to exceed unity, then the whole amplifier falls to the ground. It can be junked. Okay? Now, I also told you that a negative feedback increases the bandwidth of an amplifier. It helps to improve the bandwidth of an amplifier. And that is very easy to establish. Suppose we consider the high frequency response of an amplifier. At high frequencies, an amplifier A of S is of the form A0, the mid band gain divided by, yes, 1 plus, plus G omega by omega H. We replace G omega by S, so it becomes S by omega H. Agree? Mid-band gain is A0 and the 3 dB point is omega H. We replace G omega by S. We work in the uh, Laplace domain. Okay? This is the expression for the high frequency gain of an amplifier. Now take AFS which is A of S divided by 1 negative feedback. So plus beta, we assume that beta is resistive, that is beta is not a function of frequency, beta A of S. If you substitute this in this relation and make some simple algebra, the result is AFS becomes equal to A0 divided by 1 plus A0 beta. This is expected at mid band, this must be the gain, divided by 1 plus S divided by omega H multiplied by 1 plus A0 beta which means that the omega H with feedback increases by the factor 1 plus A0 beta. Okay? At what cost? The gain. The gain is reduced by the factor 1 plus A0 beta. So what you, what you gain in bandwidth, you lose in gain. Is that clear? No, it's a, it's a um, trade-in. You want more bandwidth, you sacrifice gain. The product, obviously you see AF0 multiplied by omega HF, this product is a constant. It is equal to A0 omega H. Isn't that right? Okay. This is another example of the uncertainty relationship that you have, the famous uncertainty relationship of physics that you cannot increase both simultaneously. Okay. On the other hand, if you look at the low frequency gain, at low frequency, what is the transfer function? A of S is A0, then 1, minus. 1 minus J omega L by omega. So I can write this as 1 plus omega L by S. Don't bring in a negative sign here because that will make a pole in the right half plane. And, this, and the system will automatically be unstable. The expression was A0 divided by 1 minus J omega L by omega. Now it can be written as 1 plus 
j omega and j omega you replace by s. So the pole is at s equal to <coughs> minus omega l it must be in the left half line okay. So if I now substitute in this a of s is equal to a of s divided by 1 plus beta a of s then you can very easily show that a f of s becomes equal to a 0 divided by 1 plus a 0 beta as usual the mid band gain becomes this and what we have is 1 plus omega l divided by s times 1 plus a 0 beta which means that omega l with feedback becomes equal to <coughs> omega l divided by 1 plus a 0 beta. So the low frequency 3 dB point decreases decreases which means that the total bandwidth increases okay. So if I have without feedback a gain curve like this then with feedback it would be like this. The bandwidth increases by the same factor as the gain reduction okay. So what you gain in bandwidth you lose in gain. <coughs> yeah. Should have a gain of 1 plus a0 beta. That's right. Preamplified stage should have a gain of 1 plus a0 to be able to uh, bring the gain back to the previous quantity. I want to draw uh, a couple of examples of feedback amplifiers, practical feedback amplifiers, and um, just to give you a, a test of what a practical feedback amplifier looks like. But in this drawing, I will skip the biasing parts you can draw that separately. I will only draw the signal part okay. A typical uh, feedback amplifier may be like this I S R S this could be a high impedance source. High impedance source we usually model as a current source. Can you give me an example of a high impedance source in practice? Hmm? A capacitive transducer. In a measurement, if you use a capacitive transducer to uh, to transfer, let's say, mechanical strain to an electrical signal, capacitive transducer is a high impedance source, or even a microphone is a high impedance source. Okay, now suppose we have a two-stage amplifier like this. Q1. This is what I mean by excluding the biasing circuits. I'm only drawing the AC, the signal circuit. For the biasing I have to show VCC, I have to show how the base is biased and things like that. I skip all those. I only show the AC equivalent circuit. And then you have a Q2, another transistor in which in which there is a resistance R sub E which is unbypassed. Okay. And the Q2, this is RL2 and this current is I0, the output current is I0. Okay. RE <laughs> is a small resistance, RE is a small resistance. Now if I want to apply feedback to this, what kind of amplifier is this? Current to current, it is this current which is of importance, current to current, so it is a current amplifier. Okay. It is a current amplifier, two stage current amplifier, I0 is the quantity of interest. Now if I want to apply to apply feedback a sample of the current is to be taken. In other words I have to make a connection from here. I do not want to do that because if I do that then the feedback will depend on the load. Is not that clear? So what I do is I take an approximately equal current. You know this current is approximately equal the emitter current? It is I0 divided by alpha where alpha is approximately 1. So I sample this current. Now I do not sample the current as a current. I, I use a small resistor here to drop a voltage which is proportional to the current and this is what is applied here through a resistance let us say RF. Sir, yes. It is I0 depending on the RF and so is current. Pardon me? Yes, sir, I0 is dependent on RL2. Right. Yeah. If I make a connection here obviously the effective RL will be disturbed. 
I do not want to do that. So, I use a small resistance here and make this connection here. Okay. Now, what is the kind of input connection here? Series or shunt? Series. Okay. Let this current be I f. This current I i if R s is not there is obviously I s minus I f. So, it is negative feedback. How do you know it is negative feedback? Because I could have drawn I f in the other direction also. No. For that, for that you have to do a little bit of analysis and I will do it in half a minute. Suppose I s increases. Suppose I s increases. This will make I i increase. Okay. And this will make the collector current of I c 1 increase or decrease? Increase. If the collector current of I c 1 increases, what about this voltage? The load voltage? No. It must decrease. Current increases, so the collector voltage decreases. If the collector voltage decreases, then what happens to I 0? It decreases. If I 0 decreases, then this voltage, if you call this V e, V e decreases. And if this voltage V e decreases, then what happens to I f? Increases. <laughs> In other words, a tendency of I s to increase is arrested, which means that it is negative feedback. This is called a qualitative loop analysis and it requires much more than analytical ability. It requires intuition. It requires careful consideration and application of the strongest tool of an engineer namely common sense. Common sense. More on 11. Modern technology today plays a very important role even in fulfilling our basic needs.